Why, hello there, side quest number two. How are you doing? Oh, this is Olvin. This is the scumbag. Okay. We all know it was the Karja who let the Bristlebacks into the valley. Sent them straight through the gates of barren light. That is preposterous. Why would we let dangerous machines into our own land? Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. The land that Honest laborers work tirelessly with no say in its governance? The land that should you sign the decree... Oh, you and that damned concession decree... ...would be managed by the people who actually live and work on it. Ooh, it sounds like Olvun might be trying to stop the... The shenanigans from going on. Okay. What do you want, Albund? Some kind of payment? My dear magistrate, you think I can be bought? What do we know? If you want that whistle blown, all you have to do is have your soldiers remove the bristlebacks and sign the concession decree. Face it. What other choice do you have? <clears throat> Hi. Savior, what auspicious timing. Might we discuss a matter of importance to the Sundom? We might. Later. Very well. I shall be waiting. I thought that Javad was Olven. I got oh, confused at first. The savior herself. Walloper of Durval, gutter of youth. Uh, maybe. I've heard many tales of your beauty and heroics, my fierce lady warrior. Olven Freeholder, at your service. So, what could have dragged you away from the fine silks and wine of Meridian to this smudge of a settlement? Your saviorly attention must be needed elsewhere. I'm here for the embassy and- The embassy? Why, well, uh, by the forge. Ah, greater gears for greater matters. Guess that means you'll be moving on. Once I've dealt with any problems around here that need my saviorly attention. Ah, the Bristlebacks, of course. Got to get rid of them if you want that embassy to take place. Well, best get to it, hey? And off you go. Not so fast. <laughs> oh, it sounds like Olvind is trying to, like, get control of the area from the Karja by releasing the Bristlebacks. Okay. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the Magistrate. Well, I refuse to play nice to some fancy-robed parchment pusher when my fellow laborers are being bullied, intimidated, and taken advantage of. How noble of you. Noble? Ha! Born with a hammer in hand, I was. Nobody handed me anything or dropped opportunity into my lap. Everything I've achieved, I've done on my own. And where is this hammer now? The, uh, burden of leadership forced me to set it aside. The Karja risk nothing while demanding that good Osram gamble with their lives out there. Someone had to step up and say no more. You ordered the work stoppage? Indeed I did. We're laborers, not soldiers. Until the Karja clean up their mess and give us the fair deal we deserve, I'm not risking Osram lives. Fair deal? You mean your concession decree? <laughs> it's not my decree. It's on behalf of all the good Osirum laborers of this land who do all the backbreaking work while only the Karja reap the rewards. All we're asking for is the ability to share in this prosperity for a land worked by the people for the people. Right. And just how much would be your share? Only an amount appropriate to my contributions to this community, uh, of course. Gee, I wonder, uh... I wonder who decides just how much contribution he's made. If Chainscrape is on Karja land, shouldn't a Karja be in charge? Who appointed you? The sensibilities of good Osram folk, of course. You think a Karja can head this whole venture? Ha! Ah! The Magistrate can barely make the trek from Baron Light without losing a few screws. So you have no real authority then? People only follow you because you say so. Loudly. Anyone who has followers has authority. I've been with Chainscrape from the beginning. I mean, I'm practically its founder, and its honest folk know I'm indispensable to its success. He sure does talk like a politician, doesn't he? You said you founded Chainscrape. Somehow I doubt that. Practically founded, I said. Pr 
practically. I alone saw its potential when it was just a smattering of tents and barren light shadow. I invested in the mine, convinced some friends back home to do the same, and here we are. You could say chain scrape is what it is thanks to me. Oh, so you're not just standing around and profiting off everyone else? Not at all. Sure, I make a little return on my investment here and there, but my main priority, as it was from the beginning, is to look after the well-being of these honest, working Osram. Where's the whistle? Right in the middle of town, but with the threat out there, I'm not endangering innocent Osram lives. I'm going to clear out the bristlebacks. And when I'm done, this valley is going to get moving. If that's what it takes. Until then, I'll keep looking after the safety of these good folks. Just be ready to blow the whistle. You better blow that dang whistle, brother. The bristlebacks. Two more skill. Dude, they're handing out skill points like it's candy. Why did the main... Okay, the main quest does give two skill points. I was looking at the previous main quest. I was like, the main quest only gives baby experience while the side quests give skill points? That's madness. Oh, baby. Yo, the bristlebacks are really close. What the heck? Oh, no, I got to go talk to the car, Joe. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Okay, we might not be seeing Aaron today. See that card your magistrate wanted. I was not expecting to be. In the tavern. I was not expecting to be hit with quite so many uh, side quests right out the gate. But uh, you know, oh, where is the nearest campfire for me to save? I need to like, I need to trigger it as being green too. Is this the campfire? Fast travel, free. Oh, you can fast travel for free if you're at a campfire? Oh, that's neat. That's new. Do the campfires not turn green when you've activated them anymore? Maybe I did already activate this one. Did I? Fast travel to campfire. Yeah, okay. So I did already activate that one. Oh, they're faded out and they turn white now. That's interesting. I prefer them turning green because it's very easy to tell. But I mean, now that I know what I'm looking at, I, I can tell. Like, this one is obviously faded out. This one is colored in. So, like, I can tell now. Crimson Arrows, there's the mine. Okay. The heck is up there? Alright, alright. So, who, what have we got in here? Is this where Petra is? Is she this other uh, side quest mark? Looking at the skill tree, it makes sense they hand out skill points. Yeah, I agree. I just wasn't expecting the side quest to be giving out... Like, side quest giving out a skill point, I would have been like, Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Giving out two, though, is more than I expected. I'm I'm down for it. I just wasn't expecting it. Why, hello there. You're not Petra. You're Mildef. What a name. Hey, Mildef. Mildef. I took some of your stew last time I went into the wild. Kept me going for a week. Felt like I could have put a strider in a sleeper hole. Enjoy it while it lasts. Sounds like you're serving up some uh, impressive provisions here. Ah, <sighs> not again. You can have the discount too, but you'll have to come back later. I think you have me confused with someone else. Oven didn't send you? No. Oh, my apologies. It's just that. His minions won't stop pestering me. <sighs> now I've even worn out my special grill. Since I'm in the midst of a crisis, perhaps you could skip to what it is you wanted? Some of your food? Of course. By the way, I didn't mention it earlier, but another one of the complaints in the first Zero Dawn, and it didn't really bother me, I didn't really notice it as much, but people would say, like, the face models would be a little off sometimes when talking, and I could see it here and there, but it never really... I didn't really see it all that much compared to other people who talked about it, but man, the face models and, like, the modeling in this game fit the graphics amazingly. Like, look at how... look at how realistic this dude looks! It, dude, it's so good, I love it. Are Alvin's people causing you problems? Oh, yeah. They constantly demand my best, but the equipment I need to make my signature dishes isn't built for batch cooking. And don't get me started on the Olven discount they feel so entitled to. And if you refuse? I make meals. No trouble. Understandable. How did you end up in Chainscrape? Heard about a new and upcoming town at the edge of the frontier. 
Where there's a town, there's a tavern. That was a need of work. So I got myself out here and started cooking. Some of these people had never tasted proper boars and berries stew before. Anyway, next thing I knew, people kept coming back. I guess they like my food. More than ale. Probably both. Now I'm getting hungry. Uh, we got like 30 more minutes. I can last 30 minutes. Your last customer mentioned your cooking really kept him going out in the wild. Where I'm headed, I could use some of that. I would be happy to oblige, especially since you have the decency to ask pleasantly. But? But my special groove griddle is no more. Without it, I can't cook any of my signature dishes. I hate to think what'll happen when I'm forced to refuse Olven or his goons. Even if I already had the right ingredients, there's nothing I can do. Unless you can source me a temporary replacement? What do you need? For the ingredients. A few pieces of decent wild meat, and I'd say a big handful of bitter leaf stems. That'll do. As for the griddle, a corrugated metal panel might suffice until I can have a new one forged. You'd likely find one in the scrounger pile if you follow the river to the northeast. Don't worry, I'll clean it first. <laughs> You'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way. Assuming you're as much a hunter-gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Smildaf. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. And don't let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. What a nice guy! I, I like this man! A dash of courage. Gather wild meat, uh, bitter leaf, and go to the scrounger site. Okay, only one skill point. Understandable. They can't all be two skill point gainers. Alright. Yeah, remember how I said, like, oh, let's focus on the main mission so that I can get to see Aaron in today's stream? We might have to see Aaron in tomorrow's stream. <laughs> we might have to wait a little bit for my boy Aaron. Uh, oh, we need to talk to the magistrate in here. What's this unknown? Is it in here as well? What's that marker? Unknown machine strike? Strike, you say? Oh, is this the magistrate right here? Ah, oh, yes, Javad the Willing. What's up, dude? Willing for what? Savior, thank you for taking the time. And my condolences that you had to endure all once bloviating. I've dealt with worse. It sounds like he's really trying to put you over the barrel. The idea that the Karja purposely let Bristlebacks into the dawn, it's, it's completely absurd. But the louder and longer he says it, the more support he'll get for his damned concession decree. How did the Bristlebacks get into the Daunt? No one knows for sure. The first report of them came from west of the quarry. But unless they have wings I don't know about, I don't see how they could have come over the mountains. No other way in. The only way I know about is barren light. Look, if you can get to the bottom of this, I can offer a considerable bounty in return. Help me shut Olvent up. What is this concession decree that Olvent wants? He wants the Sundom to designate portions of the Daunt as Osaram holdings. Only the portions, mind you, that produce any value. Let me guess. Because he stands to profit somehow? Exactly. With the Daunt under Osaram law, he could secure more investment for their numerous ventures. He can't get those investments without the concession? No. Not while there's a chance the Sundom could revoke their access. Hence, why the concession is so important to him. And why blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks, no matter how absurd, works in his favor. How does blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks help Olven get his concession? Look around. This may be the Sundom, but... Chain scrape is all gears and rust and bad ale. Claiming that the Karja loosed the bristlebacks in order to intimidate Osaram laborers into obedience. Well, let's just say no one here has forgotten the atrocities of the mad Sun King. And with the bristlebacks bringing work in the valley to a halt, Alvunt has plenty of time to pick at barely healed wounds. And if the Osaram refuse to work, unless the concession is signed, you won't have a choice. Correct. 
The reconstruction of Baron Light must continue. How did you get stuck out here? I asked for the posting, believe it or not. Overseeing the entire valley on behalf of the Sun King? It was an honor. Is an honor, I mean. But your job would be a lot easier without someone like Ulvind blasting hot air all the time? Ulvind's not going anywhere. He's been around longer than I have. Even fancies himself the founder of Chainscrape. <sighs> well, I'll find a way to live with him. I have to. Yo, I, you know, Javon? The Willen? I like you. I like the cut of your jib. You said the bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry? Yes, according to one terrified laborer, said the ground trembled before they came charging down the hillside. He took off and ran all the way here. Good place to start looking, then. If you learn the truth, maybe Ulvant will stop blaming the Karja for every problem under the sun, and maybe then he'll actually focus on rebuilding Baron Light instead. Maybe, man. Maybe. See you later, Fluffy Munch. Thanks for coming to stream. Ooh, okay, so we do have it set up uh, like how it was in the old game where we have multiple arrows on one weapon. It looks like they just gave you more weapon spots in this game. Probably more weapons only have like two, uh, two things of ammo instead of, uh, instead of three, which uh, seems like a fair trade to me. I'm down for that. More weapon types, honestly, I'm super down for. Because, uh, when playing Zero Dawn, it would have been really nice to have, like, less weapon types. Like, less, uh, like, blast slings that had, like, explosion, fire, and ice when I really only wanted ice on the blast sling. But then, like, the blast sling would take up the spot of my trip caster. Which, on my trip caster, I would only ever use, like, explosions and maybe fire traps. I didn't really use electric traps that much. Honestly, I think this setup, more weapons, less ammo type per weapon, is probably more favorable to what I like, to be honest. Yo, Aaron is not far. How much time do I have? I've got like 25 minutes left in stream. We didn't talk to Petra. I don't know where Petra is at. But I'm going to be honest with you, I really, really want to see Aaron in this stream. I hope. The only thing I'm worried about is that this main mission is going to be like a... Like a 40 minute event or something. I'm actually I'm actually a little worried that it's gonna be like, oh you gotta go over now. But uh let's let's do it. New melee pit? Any Osram worth their steel knows training in close combat at Chain Scrape's melee pit can mean the difference between life and death. Talk to the pit master Oh we're gonna sit in my throat. Talk to the pit master? Okay. There are so many different categories. There were only like six in the original game. Six or seven. Oh my word. There's like 12 of them now. Or more. That's more than 12. That's like 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17? 17 or 18, give or take? I probably miscounted. Ah! I want to do this while I'm right here. Aaron's going to have to wait. I hate it, but he's going to have to wait. You wanted to speak to me? Well, you know better than anyone it's a dangerous world out there, and not just against machines. Name's Odur. This here's my training pit. Best place to practice close combat this side of the Forbidden West. Say, I wonder who'd win in a fight. You, the savior of Meridian, champion of the East, or the Enduring, master of the West. Who? The Enduring. A legendary Tanakh fighter, the master of masters. I've heard the Tanakh have training pits just like this one. It's how the warriors get so fierce, see? And only the very best from the pits get to train with the Enduring. So, to find the Enduring, I should look for these training pits if I'm ever out that way? You'll have to go far if you do. The Tanakh are split into three clans. Three clans, three capitals, three training pits. My guess is you'd have to beat all of them if you want to train with the Enduring. If the Tanakh don't kill you on sight, that is. But that's a far spark in the wind. As for right now, I also offer challenges to test your fighting skill. Who would I be fighting exactly? You? Well, I know you're the savior and all, but you have to beat all the others first to challenge me. Rules are rules. We only use dual blades and practice arrows, mind. These drunken fools would run themselves through otherwise. 
You'll have to leave everything but your spear and practice arrows at the gate. But I'll look after your gear, not to worry. So, what do you say? Up for some training? <laughs> I might be. That's what I like to hear. Oderg is his character design is gonna be in my nightmares tonight, chat. So many metal circles around him and those like awful glasses that he's wearing, I guess you would call him. My dude, he's wild. Okay, so uh, melee pits. So there are like four of these in the world. This one and then like the three capitals, maybe another one here and there, who knows? And this enduring guy, that sounds really awesome. I, I look forward to doing these. I wonder if these are kind of like replacing hunting grounds or if there's still gonna be hunting grounds in the game as well. I did, I do really like hunting grounds. I didn't really like the Frozen Wilds DLC hunting grounds, but other than that one, in the base game of Zero Dawn, I enjoyed all of the hunting grounds, more or less. Melee pits test your close quarter fighting skills against other human opponents. Complete all challenges against other fighters to ultimately face the pit master. The pit also allows you to practice your melee skills in a focused tutorial or an open-ended training session. That's nice. Okay, challenges, tutorials, and practice. Block breaker, resonator blast... Challenge locked. Complete all other challenges for the Pitmaster challenge, of course. You need to learn Block Breaker and the Skill Tree to unlock this challenge. Okay. Okay, and if I didn't have the Resonator Blast skill, I wouldn't be able to do this one. Alright, this is really cool! Nora Warrior. I need to learn these skills to like... Okay, so this is like how you test all of the stuff you've learned. Spinning a Scythe? 